glory to God. Amen. Why is Gabriel controlling you like this? Listen, all I'm going to stand to set order to his little behind. This is Big Brother. Big Brother needs to sit right there and keep him in check. You need to listen to your elders when they're speaking to you. Orville is not telling you anything wrong. This will be the last time I'll be interrupted by you and Gabriel. Orville will have a seat next to you, your little brother, and you be the big brother. Keep him accountable. Amen? Keep him lined up. Ain't no mama's boy here. Look at me, Gabriel. Ain't no mama boy time. When you're in school, you will be crying for mama. Amen? Amen? Behave yourself. You're in church. There's an order. Be obedient. All right? You're a good boy. Listen to your big brother. Amen. This is why sometimes in the house you walk up. You got to keep them in check, big sister. You got to line them up. Lace them up. Amen. Amen? You want to use mommy. Mommy. No. You know, for free, but All right? So let's get back to obedience. Amen. The spirit of obedience. You know, I can share because of where I'm coming from. I remember my mama driving me to church. I don't want to go home. But because I live in mama's house, I got to do what mama say. And then mama would give me $5 to put in the offering. Yeah, I would give the gesture. I would give the act like if I did the, I put the offering in there, but that $5 stayed in my hand. It never reached in that plate. Because I had other moments. Listen, some weed man was about to get my five dollars and I was about to buy a split. <laughs> and I'm in church. No fear of the Lord. It's not like my mom, she had to be like, did you give it? Did you give it? No. It's about me truly getting in trouble, getting in, in a relationship with God, a personal relationship where I have so much fear and reverence for God that I'm willing to just be obedient to God. Even when nobody's looking. That's right. And this is where we fail a lot of times. Because when mama's short, that's when she's going to get attention. But when mama ain't around, I saw videos and I couldn't even believe that's cheap. Yeah. But when mama's short, he's at attention. This is where we fail. Don't teach them to think like when I show up, no. You gotta teach them to have reverence for a God who we can't see, but we know that he's there, just like the wind. Amen. Amen. You can go outside when it's a tornado, you can pretend like the wind in there, nothing will take you away. You can live like and pretend like God ain't there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Glory to God. So, the first thing he told to Saul, Obedient to my word. Yeah. Yeah. He used to prophet. He spoke to the prophet. Give the word to Saul. Go there, kill them all. Kill mama, child, dog, cat, kill everything. Because God remember what they used to do to his people. Judgment is not ours. The battle is not ours. It's the Lord. He does it on his time. And all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. 
But everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. My goodness. When we look at King David, when, God's, when King David took censor of God's people and God started to kill all the people, what did King David do? The king said, no, God, please forgive me. I caused this on your people. Take me instead. But Mr. Amalekai, the king, wiped them all out. Not one word. He was just happy to save himself. Come on, you can keep the best lamb, the best sheep. Come on, save me. Save me. <clears throat> when we're not content with what God has given to us, it will keep us desiring things that we shouldn't even do. We should refuse. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. We should refuse these things. Be content. In your position, in the place that God has placed you. Yeah. Be content and perfected. Work that soil and perfect it. Bring forth tree and fruit and, and watch it grow. And then you can move on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, Pastor. But while your stuff is trying to grow, you're not even nurturing it. You just worried about what they got going on over here. You're just more interested over here. And then you're neglecting what you got over here. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from following me and had not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried unto the Lord all night. My goodness, Samuel cried all night. He cried all night. Why? Because he was chosen by God. Do you think God made mistakes? God makes no mistakes. God makes no mistake. But here goes Samuel crying all night. God said to Samuel, it repented me. The last time I heard God talking like this was when he destroyed the entire earth with the flood. He said, it repented me that I even created man. So now God is saying this about somebody who he chose. You are chosen. I chose you to do this to king, to rule my people. And now God is it repented me that I even chose you. But God is not a God that go back on his word. He's a promise keeping God. Amen. Right? Amen. Pull him up, soldier. Pull him up. Shake him. Pull him up. He's a promise keeping God. Right? But here, somebody who was chosen is no longer chosen. So, you tell me, the promise keeping God, that means there's something that could not avoid the contract between me and God? Indeed. As me being a chosen generation? You mean there's something called disobedience? Listen, I ain't got time for offense. Because there's a, yes, offense must come, right? I'm going to pause right there, real quick. Just so we can get a little bit more word in us. Write this down, people of God. Great. Psalms 119, verse 165. Psalms 119, verse 165. And I want you to highlight it. Because a lot of us, we want to use this scripture and be like, no, oh, yes, offense is going to come. Right? Yeah, get up. Psalm, 1, Psalm 119, verse 165. What does it say? Great. 
Oh my God. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. So when we think that, oh yeah, offense is going to come. No, but if you love the law, if you love the Lord, if you love what God has set up, his kingdom, if you obedient to his kingdom, what is this about friends? Yeah. Somebody who loves the Lord 
When you say, you know what? God, 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 that aggression needs to get out. This fast is causing that aggression because it's starving our flesh. So, so, so the, the thing that you used to love of that anger is now being suppressed and you don't like to be muscled. So, so, so it's going to come out and pop this little nasty head. But it's going to be the thing you're say, okay, I see you. But you ain't got no control. The spirit is running this. The desire of flesh. You know what I mean? 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 What do you expect me to do? This is your creatures. No. It's the flesh that you got to control. The spirit. The spirit will let you flat. The spirit will let you look at them as a soul. Valuable. They'll make you value that creature that God created. Show up, they'll throw them up here, they'll throw them up there, and then the two groups will start fighting, 
and you wouldn't even see it was this one who threw the rock. The teacher said, this right here, for fear you can put that person because that person will end up dead or go in jail. And this is what Saul did. He moved his out of the equation. I'm innocent. It's these people. But who, who got the instructions? I would have never wanted to kill all these people if it wasn't for you. You got the instructions from the prophet. You got the instructions from God. But instead of being obedient to it, you want to do what you want to do. Yeah. Prophetess, let's continue. We have verse 16. 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said unto what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord said thee on journey, and said, Go, and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then, didn't thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and did it evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought out the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. So he's in denial. Mentally. Yeah. You're talking to somebody, this is wrong, wrong but they insist. Yeah. They're trying to make it look right. Yeah. That's somebody who can't even receive correction. Right. You'll be wasting your time. Right. Even with King David, when the prophet went to him right. and he spoke, King David, he, he was like, man, this person needs to get lit. This person needs to die. Right. The prophet said, but it's you. Yes. Yes. You know what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. And and King David went into praying and fasting for the child. I was thinking it was a child in the womb, but when I read it go, this was a baby. Could you imagine carrying that baby for nine months? Giving birth to a baby healthy. And then all of a sudden, because you thought your sins wasn't gonna catch up to you. God said, because of this, since you come into knowledge of what you have done. God said, because you have come into the knowledge of what you have done, this child will die. No matter how much action and prayer and fasting you did, you could not save that child. Still in denial. One of the greatest gifts is when you know you're wrong and you're back against the wall, just speak the truth. At least it will start the process of healing. Get the embarrassment out of the way. When you start going on trying to fix it, man, you look more dumb. You look more stupid. You look more. I'm when I look at different people who've been exposed over the years. And they'll just say, you know what, yeah, you know what, yeah, I was, it was me, yeah, it was me, I had all these women now, cheating on them, I told them, and I exposed the exposure. Wow. But instead, you see them trying to hide and paint and duct tape and rope, and, and then I said, no, come on, they will give you more. That's what sin will happen. You're so bound to sin that you're trying to cover something, to cover something, to cover something. But when you're in truth, the healing process can begin. You're free. You're free because it's not about man. It's really about God. You want know when God cracked that cloud, He can find you living righteous and holy. Some people might not like that because they want you to be condemnation. They want you to be in bondage. They want you to be bound because they don't want you set free. Because when you bound, they look good. They can beat their chest and say, "Oh, I'm saved." You need Jesus. 
Then you put your head up and say, I could be late. I could be late. I could be late. They want to see you down. Because when you got people who's down low than you, it gives you a sense of in, what's that word? In, in, inferior. Inferiority. When you feel like you, you're superior. You can walk around with your head high. No, you need Jesus as much as that. You need Jesus as much as that. Come on, this envy now, King. Let's continue. Verse 21. But the people took of the spoiled sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Galilee, my God. And Samuel said, Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and so, sacrifices? So, so these people, because of their disobedience, they want to now tell God how we're going to do this. We kept the good looking sheep, we kept the healthy looking cows, because we were going to sacrifice it unto you. But really and truly, their motives were straight up about their cows. Because what happened with that sacrifice? Don't they eat? They're not thinking about God. You see, if it was about, if it maybe was, God is going to get everything. I bet you they would have been obedient and kill everything. But you see, the motives was not even correct. They were like, oh God, we chose the best because you. No, you really chose the best because you know you're about to get peace. You're about to get a piece of land land. You're about to get some the best. You're gonna you think about your own flesh. When your motives are just about you. You see, and this is a part of our mind that can be deceptive because we don't even know it. You know, we don't even know what's in it. I don't know what tomorrow will hold. You see, I was speaking to somebody and they're like, man, I got married, and this person just hit this thing. I did not know this person was like this. And I had to tell the person, but this ain't the first time you have this type of person. So maybe something in you that keeps drawing these type of people. This person had it so hidden, I didn't see it until now. It's still not that person, it's really you. What is in you that you keep drawing this type of person? What hurt? Have you not been free from that? Have you looking like a victim to these people that they keep coming to you and then you believe whatever they're telling you? And then you just stuck in the cycle and now you're wondering seven, ten years of marriage is like, what have I been married to? Now what, you're looking to get out? There's no, no. I said, what you need to do is, you need to probably go back to the old days when you was happy to come home. You cook that food, and you do what you're supposed to do as a wife. It might be hard, but it's the truth. Hallelujah. 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 Had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in disobeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. And to hearken then to the fat of rams. So basically all this animal that you guys think you're going to come and just sacrifice to God. And think you're going to be a good standing with God. Because you're already walking in disobedience. Samuel is saying, look, God don't care about none of this. He's, he's more concerned about the obedience. Can you be obedient? Because when you're obedient to something, you love it. When you're obedient to something, a voice, yeah. that means you like God, I'm trying to show you that I'm totally submitted. Yeah. When you're obedient to God, you already tell them, God, I fear you, and I, I'm concerned with what you think. Yeah. Obedience is far better than the sacrifice. Yeah. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. My goodness, rebellion? You mean when I feel like rebellion? Man, I just ain't gonna pass. I'm not a church of pastor, but I ain't gonna pass. And then when everybody else is around, you wanna laugh and joke like if you're the biggest, you're the cool kid. Ah! Oh, the 
the lamp is on you. When God show up, it's on you. Or you one of us the ones who are actually trying to be obedient? No, buddy, you're in the wrong kingdom. The joke is on you. Could you imagine me making it to heaven? And then you're like, hey, buddy, when you go hold up, the angel gotta stop you like, oh, you, you, you can't even be obedient to put down the biscuit. He said it's like rebellion. It's like witchcraft. So that means you ain't gotta go by your little what the witchcraft say kind of no. You're already in it. You you you're in it. Some people think you gotta go get light candles and you gotta go shamba shamba shake shake and all that foolishness. No, you rebellion, you're in it. Yeah, right? You didn't know. My goodness, on TikTok doing all these dance and didn't even know you're in it. Witchcraft, my goodness. Can't laugh and joke away out of that. Sorry. It's not my head. I'm just trying to get there. Just like you. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness? Game bro? Game bro? Stubbornness? It's like iniquity? Stubbornness? Oh, oh y'all thought you was going to get a pass. When COVID comes, COVID ain't giving him a pass. He gonna be in the hospital just like the rest of y'all would tell who, who tried to fight for his life if COVID was to come through. No respect for what you call God gonna. Oh, okay, girl. Okay, would you? No. Iniquity. That's what it's like. Stubbornness. When you're stubborn. When you are stubborn. And some of us are just stubborn just because we want to look like it's cool. Yeah. Come on, it's just so easy to do. It's like, come on, it's so easy to just do what, what they just said, the instructions you just got. It's so easy to do, but you just want to be stubborn. That part of us, like, I just want to be stubborn. I know my mama said it, but since my mama would say it, it's like that aggression. Some of us are so used to hearing a woman. Like, as soon as a woman speaks, it's like, uh, it triggers uh, something. My wife used to tell me stuff back in the day. I'm like, you know what? I don't know why I keep getting upset, but then I have to realize, because my mom, I used to struggle with that. So now hearing my wife say, I'm thinking like, yeah, you think you're my mom? And it caused me to be in aggression instead of receiving the correction. Because if I receive it, they'll give me life. But here I go and I want to fight against it. Now I'm walking in witchcraft. Now I'm walking in, in um, iniquity. And it's so easy, this is what the devil do. He comes in the sun, he looks nice and pretty. He's like, yeah, look all shots. He looks pretty. That's what the devil do. He dress it up and make it look so easy and like, oh, you have to do this. But it's not. It's not. Come on now, be real. We watch some scary movies. You really see one of them things coming at you. You know what? You won't receive it and give me, take this pill, boy. No, but if it looks nice and cute, something that you've been desiring, like, oh, all right, let me try it. Come on now. You know, as soon as that ugly boy come and tell you something, you're ready to fight. Oh, no! But let me tell you one of them cruel ones you were dying. You're like, oh, hee 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 hee. Check that spirit. Check that spirit. Oh, huh? as soon as the cute one, as soon as the cute one, you agree. Ha 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 but let me know you want to tell you the same thing. You'd have been like, you'd have been like, no, no, who you know and you ready to fight. Come on, check that spirit. Come on now. That's not how God operates. God look at us all as his creatures. We all beautiful. But when you start picking and choosing and you're feeling, that's something new. You got to check that and say, okay, what's going on here? Self-evaluation. But thou hast rejected the word of the Lord. He had also rejected thee from being king. My goodness. So you mean God just said, because you rejected and would not be obedient, now you're not even king. I'm going to even take away your position. Hold up. I thought he's a God of his word. I thought he's a promise keeper. Waymaker. 
speaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yes, that's who he is, but to the obedient. That's right. Yes, that is who he is, but to the obedient. Come on, how you gonna live in rebellion? Studying witchcraft. How you gonna be? Come on. And still wanna be. And then you wonder why. Alright, let me help you. That's why. That's why. Let's continue. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have seen. You should have did this from the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning, in, in the beginning, in. from the beginning, I should, you know what, Samuel, I know it's only God who revealed this to you, yeah, it's me, I'm God, forgive me, I was walking with a man, but instead, we knew it all from them, and then he just, come on, try to confuse God, how you gonna try to confuse God? You're the only one that's confused. So now that judgment has been released from God, now you're trying to say, oh, yeah, I have sinned. Yeah. Now you're trying to hold on to accountability. And this is a foolishness that we struggle with as human beings. Listen, disappoint me here on earth. Let's disappoint each other here so we can fix it and make it right. Because we all try to go into heaven. You hear struggling and holding people up. You don't even want to go to hell with that. That package is weighing you down and you will not realize it. Forgiveness will set you free. Not the person. Forgiveness will set you free. Forgive the person. And stop the healing process. Are you going to go into that thing? Stop the healing process. Let's continue. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have seen. I have seen. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord. I, I, I. Okay, now he's recognizing. And thy words, because I feared the people. My God, who did he fear? The people. Who did he fear? The people. My God, when you have a fear of man, when you fear what they think about you, when you fear how stupid you might look, when you fear, oh, you might not look cool, when you fear being a part of the in crowd, when you fear man, obey their voice. Now, therefore, I pray thee, pardon my sin. So, this is why God fired him. His heart is beginning to expose and show us what's really in there. If God didn't write this part of the word, we wouldn't understand. We look like, now, nah, God, you must be. You have a hard God to deal with. You won't just give him instructions, kill all these people, even the kids, and then and then because he didn't do it, you're going to go down. You all listen to him? But no, God exposed his heart for us to now read about it and see the secret motives of our heart. He would have never, he would have never taken accountability until the judgment came. Now that judgment is here, he's like, yeah, it's me. Forgive Now he want to acknowledge all along what's really in his heart. Really and truly, God, I don't even care. I care the people more than you. Really and truly, God, I don't love you. I love the people more than you. Really and truly, this is what his heart was saying. This is what his heart was saying. We would have never known that was in his heart if it wasn't written. God want to transform us from within. He want to transform us from within. Come on now. We too easily freckled. As soon as you step on my shoulder, I get offended. Put up a wall, and then I want to use scripture. I'm holding on to unforgiveness, thinking I'm doing myself justice. I have the right to be that. I have the right to be. They did this to me. I have the right. They took my virginity. I have the right. They stole my innocence. I have the right. We hold on to these things. That's all that God is saying. No child, I can do it to you. I can do it to you. Forgive them. To heal you, yeah. forgive them. Yeah. So the healing process. 
process to begin with. When we are few people, then we can put our hands up without any right having that access. Let's be free. You'll be free to worship. You ever know that you can't even raise your hand up to worship God? Because you're truly not free, your mind doesn't have so many things that you're bound to. Samuel said unto him, The Lord hath rent the kingdom 
of Israel from thee this day, and had given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent, for he is not a man that he should repent. My God, so you're telling me that God has fired, ripped the kingdom from him, but he's still functioning as a king. Yeah. He didn't remove him out of the kingdom. He still is the king. Yeah. King David said it best, that's God's anointing. Yeah. We still got to honor We still got to honor him. Yeah. Although God just stripped this from him. Yeah. You see, he couldn't let this happen in front of everybody. Because yeah. imagine the disrespect. Yeah. Oh, the kingdom gone for me. What you telling me? Yeah. It's not going to make me go to practice. You might as well just stop it. I'm going to take my time with this. You ain't king no more. You ain't king no more. What you doing trying to tell me what to do? Come on, then that rebellion might grow even more. The disrespect will grow even more. Lord. This is why the prophet, practically the voice of God, to tell him, look, this is what it is. Amen. The kingdom is gone. You're no longer king. Amen. You're going to function. You're going to be in position. How many of us are just functioning? We're just functioning. And you know when you're just functioning, because there's no real truth on the inside. Come on, when it comes to prayer time, you can't even show up. When it comes to fasting, you turn invisible. Mm -hmm. You could tell, you could tell. No zeal. No zeal. My God, my God. Church only will give to you. I know somebody who just had TBN church. Uh -oh. Church might only look good to you on TBN. 